Just a random little video. Um, I follow a filmmaker, writer called Paul Strader. Anybody that's into filmmaking knows who Paul Strader is. He's on Facebook. He wrote Taxi Driver, a wrote um, uh, Raging Bull, or part of Raging Bull. Um, you know, I collaborated with Martin Scorsese um, and a few other films, Bringing in the Dead and The Last Temptation of Christ. And over the years, he's been his own filmmaker as well. You know, way back in the 70s, he directed Blue Collar, which was a great film, and many other films over the years, Late Sleeper. He's always kept going, you know, right up to this day. You know, he's in hospital there, and he's back up, and he's shooting films, making films. He's crowdfunded some films, one with Lindsay Lohan. It was pretty dire. Um, but he's kept going, he's kept making films, and Martin Scorsese done a tribute to him the other day. I think he won an award, um, a European award the other day, and Martin Scorsese done a video and done a tribute to him on the big cinema screen, which he was kind of emotional about and taken back by. It was a great tribute about Paul Schrader, because Scorsese was basically saying, I'll put a little clip here, but basically saying that he's kept going, you know, in a system that's difficult. He's, you know, when he's not had money, he's had to evolve and change things here and, and adapt as he's got older to make his films, where Scorsese is, you know, pretty much mainstream, you can get 200 million for a budget, you know, and I'm a huge fan of Scorsese, you know, um, but what he was basically saying, you know, and I think that's really important because if you're a creative, if you do it, you have to do it because you have to do it and you evolve with a new world and you change, you don't just stop doing it because you can't get budgets or whatever, or you don't just retire early because, you know, like, I'm not a big Tarantino fan, I was in the early days, Jackie Brown's and Drizzle, but I'm not a big, I'm no anti-Tarantino, I'm just not a fan of his work. But the whole Tarantino thing with him retiring after 10 films or something says, oh, you don't get better when you get older and I'm dropping the mic and all that bullshit. And there's guys like Eastwood and Tony Scott, uh, Ridley Scott still going. And even though they make some stinkers, the point is it's important to, if you're creative, to go and you're going to have some things that don't work and you're experimenting with some things like Paul Strader that don't work. But that's the that's the important thing. Not to have this front up where you, if you can't even make great films anymore, oh, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to retire and I'm going to leave my legacy and all that shit. It's I think it's important. The filmmakers that I like are the ones that kept going. The John Cassavetes, European directors that kept making films that were hundred years old because they love the process. They love telling stories. They ever love it. They want to spoil by Hollywood, and that's why it's such a great tribute by Martin Scorsese to Paul Schrader because Scorsese knows that he walks in the system. He's got to stay in a certain genre. You know, he, you know, he got the Irish man made because it was back of the same team of the Goodfellas. Mark Scorsese, you know, them was back in there when he got it made. So I think he respects that people that still experiment and still go and still do things. And I think that's important. And especially today, we filmmakers that are at the level that I'm at, where it's no budget films, then you're constantly having to evolve, and you should evolve. Shouldn't you be just? I'm going to make a film. It's a bit like the film that Hollywood make, except the cheaper version. I'm going to try and get it. I mean, no, you should reinvent yourself and constantly experiment and adapt um, so I think that was why it was such a great tribute for Martin Scorsese to Paul Schrader and even though Paul Schrader's make, like every other filmmaker's made a few stinkers over his time, once in a while you'll get this gem that comes out there but it's the passion to keep going and creating and not saying oh I'm going to retire at such and such a date, keep my legacy because I've done a few good films, I don't want to taint them I would rather keep going I've had a, great, a few great films I wouldn't go, oh, I just want to be known for them. I'd rather just go because I love the fucking process and I love doing it and I'm happy to make fucking tons of shit films to get to that other one that's a gem. You know, you work your way through and reinvent cinema and no, try to hold on to cinema the way it used to be. Or I want to shoot on film and I want it, I want it the way it was in the old days in the theatre. It, it, cinema's always evolved. You know, the VHS market was there for a very short period. The, the DVD was there for a short period. Theatrical was huge for a short period. It's always evolved and changed. But the one thing that stays is always the same is storytelling. Good storytelling with good stories and good characters. And it doesn't matter what format it's in, what way you see it, screen it, whatever. For me, that's the important thing. And experimental. Constantly experimenting new different ways of doing things. No stick to the old fucking way of doing it, you know. So that's why it was such an important thing for Martin Scorsese. Anyway, just a little video. Thanks for everybody that watches it. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a good weekend. Thanks a lot. Paul, we have a small surprise for you. Guardiamo insieme questo, questo video. Good evening. Uh, Paul Schrader and I have you know, known each other for over 50 years and still counting. Uh, during that time, I've uh, been very fortunate to be able to have directed his script of Taxi Driver uh, for the uh, contributions he made to, to scripting on Raging Bull and 
uh, Last Temptation of Christ, and and even um, the last one we worked on together was Bringing Out the Dead. Uh, uh, for me, I look at Paul, and I think throughout those 50 years, my respect for him as an artist has really grown with every new picture he's made. And Paul has worked under the worst conditions and at every budget level you could think of. You go from the first picture, blue collar, you go up to American Gigolo, you go to Cat People, you go to the Masterpiece in Mishima, you go to Autofocus, you go to First Reformed, Master Gardener now. And the thing is that he's always um, somehow figured a way or adapted to the circumstances of the climate of what you may call the motion picture world or the industry uh, in, in, in America and, and internationally. And he's always, in so doing, made the pictures that he wanted to make. I mean, I really feel that his career is a, a light, a beacon of personal expression, personal expression above all else, and he's never stopped growing as an artist. That's the other thing. I, I mean, I can't think of a better example for young first-time filmmakers uh, to follow. You know, uh, those of you who get discouraged, just look and adapt and survive the way Paul has and keep going, getting your movies made the way Paul does. So thanks for asking me to be part of this tribute to a truly extraordinary artist, um, my friend Paul Schreier.